Thank you so much. We love you, uh, Cersei Faith. We thank you for all of your support, um, all of your prayers. I had a video I was going to show this morning, but you, you probably have seen lots of videos and pictures from Africa. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get into the Word this morning. I just really feel uh, God's laid something heavy on my heart. I do want to. I do want to say how much we appreciate all of your support. You know, there are many of you in this church who who support us monthly, financially, and uh, we could not. We could not be in Swaziland doing what we were doing without you. Um, many of our colleagues as missionaries around the world, um, one, of the, one of the biggest issues that many missionaries face is, um, is worry and concern over finances. Because, you know, for us uh, in, in Swaziland, we're not allowed to legally have jobs. We, we're there on missionary visas, and so we can't create an income. The only way that we're supported is that people from the outside support us. And so um, many missionaries struggle because uh, if, if their finances aren't consistent from back home, uh, then, then they can't do what they're there to do. But because of people like you and your faithfulness, uh, in the year and a half that we've been in Swaziland, we've never had that concern. We've never had a single month that less than our budget has come in. And uh, we applaud you and say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for your prayers. Um, you know, when you, when you, uh, Tina talked about living, what was it, an hour and a half, two hours from home. Uh, when you live 20 some odd hours from home, uh, it can be a lonely place sometimes. Uh, but to know that there are people back home who are praying for us and then for you guys to send a team. It's been so incredible uh, as a way of encouragement for us. This morning, I just want to share a few things with you that I just feel so impressed by the Holy Spirit to share this morning. Um, as really we got back into the States and we've been, we've been home for um, what about two weeks, week and a half now, week and a half from the time we hit the ground. Um, my wife and I both have just been saying the same thing. Uh, people we come in contact with, it just seems like there's so much. Uh, just and I know a lot of it has to do with the time of the year it is, but uh, part of it I just feel like is in the air. It's in the spirit realm. Just such a sense of striving or battling or fighting. Uh, that's going on. And I've been thinking a lot about the book of Ephesians. And in the book of Ephesians, Paul, of course, is writing to the church at Ephesus and he's giving all of this instructions. And you come, uh, you come to the end of the book of Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 6, and a very, very familiar passage of Scripture. I'm not going to have to take a lot of time on it this morning because I'm sure you're, you know it well. Ephesians chapter 6, of course, right at the end of chapter 5 he's talking about husband and wife relation husband and wife relationships and how wives should submit to their husbands and how husbands should love their wives and then chapter 6 he gets into how children should obey their parents and all the parents said amen yeah. and all of this is how we are to live as believers and then he talks about how slaves should obey earthly masters and of course we don't we don't have slavery uh, in 2012, but, but a perfect way for us to really understand this is the employee-employer relationship, and uh, he talks about how an employee should relate to his employer, and uh, you know, the Word of God has a lot to teach us about how to be a great employee. We cast those things aside. And then he gets into verse 10. He says, finally, brothers... Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and, and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, 
Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. When this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, for whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul writing in chains, obviously, the church at Ephesus. And he's telling them how to stand. For the last year and a half, God has given my family... Uh, the great honor and the great privilege to serve in the nation of Swaziland. You've been a part of that. We've seen God do some incredible things in that nation. We've seen, uh, I, think, I think we've seen about five churches planted uh, just this year. You guys built a chicken house. We've seen a piggery built. We've seen four or five businesses started, micro enterprise businesses to put finances into a community. We've literally seen hundreds of people come to Christ, dozens of people healed. God has done tremendous things in Swaziland in the last year and a half. And we give God the praise for that. We give God the honor for that. But I can tell you, it, it's not like we just have rolled out of bed every day in Swaziland and these things have just happened. It has been war. It has been war. Every week when I roll out into a rural community and I step out into a rural community and You know, I want to preach a nice little salvation message or a healing message or something simple and yet the Holy Spirit speaks to my heart and says what he says almost invariably every single time. No, you get up and you preach on ancestor worship and you confront the powers of darkness in this community. You confront the powers of witchcraft that have ruled in this territory and you speak against those things and you, see, and you speak against the demonic powers that are ruling people's lives and you pray over people and you see them delivered from demonic power. And every week that I'm going to the pulpit and I'm thinking, oh, can it be easy this week? Can it be go light this week? And yet the Holy Spirit says, no. Stand. Stand. In this day of evil, in this place, in this, in this village, stand. Where the powers of darkness have ruled for generations and people have prayed to their ancestors and worshipped serpents, stand. In this community where little children are cut and muti is mixed into their blood as babies and they're dedicated to ancestors, you stand. And you preach the words of truth. And many times I feel like Paul writing from the prison cell as he's writing to the church at Ephesus. And as much as he's speaking to them as they are facing persecution and as, as they are in a battle for their lives. And he's saying to them, stand. Stand in truth. Pray for one another. And pray for me. I can tell you, the last year and a half has come at great cost. Great cost. But we must stand. As I walked into this place this morning, I just began to sense in my heart that I'm not the only one who has been battling for the last year and a half. There's some of you 
in the assignment, in the place that God has you right now. The marriage, the job, the home, the place God has. There's some of you who have been fighting for your life. There's some of you who have been fighting for your very existence. And you may not be standing in a foreign village and you may not be looking a witch doctor in the face and you may not be laying your hands on someone who's filled with demonic power but you're fighting right where you are and the enemy is warring against you just like he warred against Paul just like he was warring against the church at Ephesus just as he's warred against me but I notice what Paul says to them, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. How do you do that? How, how do I remain strong in the Lord and his mighty power when all of the forces of hell are aligned against me? He says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's themes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I think that's one of the things that has struck me so much over the last year and a half is the naivete that I believe that so many of us live with or have lived with, with so, for so many years we just live our lives as if, as if the devil doesn't care what's going on in our lives. As if he's not aware, as if he's not against us. Don't you understand that he desires to destroy this nation? Hello? We're murdering more babies now than at any point in our history. Unrighteousness runs rampant across this nation. The enemy desires to destroy us. We are in a struggle. We are in a battle. This is not peace time. This is war time. We are in a war. We are in a war for the souls of humanity. It's crazy to me how we live our lives and we go through our existence and we just act like everything is normal. Everything is not normal. The Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We are at war. He desires to destroy your life. He desires to destroy your marriage. He desires to destroy your family. He desires to destroy your children. He hates you. And he's trying to kill you. And if you believe anything else, you are believing a lie. However, friend, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You see, that's the trick of the enemy. If he can get us to fight one another... If he, can get, if he can get us to fight one another, if he can get us to concentrate on each other, if he can get us to concentrate on battles of the flesh, then he can keep us sidetracked from the real war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against other churches or other believers or other people. We don't even wrestle against unbelievers. My battle is not with an unbeliever. My battle is not with a person or an individual. My battle is a spiritual battle. When we turn our angst and our anxiety and our anger towards an individual, we are falling right into the trap of the enemy. When you become frustrated and upset with an individual, a person who has flesh and blood, you've fallen right into the trap of the enemy. He's got you distracted exactly where he wants you. 
We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's why Paul tells us for husband and wives to have relationships that are in harmony and peace with one another, for, hus- uh, for, for parents and children to live in harmony and peace with one another. That's why he tells us to live in harmony and peace with those who are our employers because our battle isn't against people. Our battle isn't against the governments of this earth. People ask me questions all the time about the government of Swaziland and the problems with the government of Swaziland. Here's what I understand. The solution for Swaziland isn't the government of Swaziland. Just like the solution for America isn't the government of America. There is no solution that can be found in man. The solution only comes through the King of Kings. doesn't matter if you live in a democracy like America or an absolute monarch like Swaziland. Where there is flesh and blood, there will be sin. Where there is flesh and blood, there will be persecution. Where there is flesh and blood, there will be pain. Our answer does not lie in man, nor is our battle with man. The Bible says that we fight spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms... So how do we do that? Therefore, put on the full armor of God. You know this very, very well. I'm sure you've heard it preached many times. Where I want to focus in, where I want to focus in, and what the Holy Spirit just keeps speaking back to me over and over again. He says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. The belt of truth buckled around your waist. Everything about the armor centered around that belt of truth. It kept it together. If I didn't have my belt on, my pants would fall down this morning. Keeps everything together. In the last year since January, I was bitten by a tick and received some sort of infection or some sort of bacteria or bug. It's not a bacteria, it's not an infection. It's called rickettsia. Two types of rickettsia living in my system. And since that time, I've probably lost around 20 pounds. If it wasn't for my belt, my pants would be falling down. It's holding it together today. As I was coming to Cersei, what the Lord just kept speaking to me, and the Lord has been speaking this to me for over and over and over again for the last several months, is this issue of truth, the difference between truth and a lie. The difference between truth and a lie. And look back to Genesis. You know this well. Genesis, God creates Adam and Eve. He places them in the Garden of Eden. He says, everything here is wonderful, blessed, yours. Take it. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything else is yours. Of course, you know the story. Satan comes. Satan says, Eve, shouldn't you have some of this fruit? No, we can't. We can't have. Did God say you can't eat of any of the trees of the Garden of Eden? No, that God didn't say we couldn't eat of any of the trees of the Garden of Eden. He said we couldn't eat of this particular tree. Oh, that particular tree. Yeah, he says if we eat of that particular tree, then we're going to die. Well, surely God doesn't mean you're really going to die. I mean... The reason he doesn't want you to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he knows if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then you'll become like him. So he's keeping something from you. So you should eat this because this is something that he's keeping from you. You know the story. Eve takes of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and she eats it. Man sins. Adam and Eve sin. Sin enters humanity. Why? Because of original sin. Original sin. Why did man fall into original sin? Because of the original lie. What was the original lie? You can't trust God. The original lie was you can't trust God with what's best for you. You can't trust God with what's best for you. He's keeping something from you. 
God created humanity and he knew that we did not have the capacity to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We were not created for judgment. We were not created with the capacity to handle judgment. To judge between good and evil. God knew what was best for us and yet Satan convinced Adam and Eve that they could not trust God with what was best for us. For him, for them. You can't trust God. What is truth? In this room this morning, there are many of us who are battling. I've been battling rickettsia for 11 months now. I've never been this sick in my life. While God has done miracle after miracle after miracle laid my hands on people who were completely deaf and God opens their ears instantly. Seen people who couldn't walk, get up and walk. I've seen people heal. I've seen people saved. I've seen, while all of that is going on, my body's been ravaged by this bacteria or whatever it is. Well, I've seen God do miracle after miracle after miracle and churches started and people saved. My body has continued to deteriorate. My marriage struggle because I have incredible headaches and I'm incredibly hard to live with. We wrestle. We wrestle. While we've watched God do all of these unbelievable things in our lives, while we wrestle, the enemy is still there. Challenging truth. Can you trust God? Can you trust God? You hear Pastor Ronnie show you things on the screen of people giving cars or jewelry or financial miracles happening around the church and the enemy's in your ear. But can you trust God? You're around altars, and I know this church, I know God does miracles in this church. You're around these altars, and you see God healing people. You see God touching people. Maybe you're even involved in the process of praying for them and seeing them healed, and yet the enemy continues to whisper in your ear, but can you trust God for your miracle, for your healing? Hello? We wrestle And the wrestling match always comes back to the original lie. Can you trust God? I'm here to to tell you today that just like Paul said to the church at Ephesus, if we're going to make it in this battle, if we're going to make it in this battle, we must put on the belt of truth. We must be centered in truth. And the truth, the truth for Adam and Eve was that God knew exactly what was best for them. He knew what they could handle. He knew what they were capable of. And he had everything in the kingdom of God for them to release to them. He had his best for them. He desired it for them. They could trust him. The truth for you and I is that healing is in his hands. The truth for every one of us is that he desires his best. He desires his kingdom to come in our lives. That's the truth for every one of us. And when we wrestle, when we wrestle, we must be, we must be founded in truth. What is the truth? What is the lie What is the truth? I believe that there are some of us in this place this morning that have spent more time focused on the lie than we have focused on the truth. And the word of the Lord for you today is to embrace the truth. My lie is called rickettsia. Your lie may be called depression. Maybe it's called bankruptcy. Maybe it's called a marriage that's falling apart. Maybe it's called addiction. Maybe it's called cancer. I don't know. I don't know what your lie is. 
But the decision today is, are you going to live in the lie? Or are you going to live in the truth? What are you going to allow to tie you together, to bring you together, to define who you are? Are you going to live in the lie? Or are you going to live in the truth? Was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil real? Was it there? Yes, but it wasn't God's plan. Is rickettsia real? Yes, absolutely. Is it ravaging my body? Yes. But is it God's plan? Absolutely not. I refuse to accept it. I refuse to allow it to define me. See, I read Hebrews chapter 11. Have you ever read it? The great hall of faith. There were those who fought and won. And there were those who were flogged and beaten and hung upside down on crosses. And every one of them are in the great hall of faith. They're all in the great hall of faith. Why are they all in the great hall of faith? They're in the great hall of faith because they continued to believe the truth of God's redemption and God's best in spite of their circumstances. In spite of what was happening to them. In spite of their situation. In spite of what was going on in their marriage. In spite of what was going on in their own body. In spite of whether they were in jail or whether they were free. They trusted God. Paul himself is writing from a prison cell to the church at Ephesus. And he says, while I'm in chains, I'll still preach the truth. What will you believe this morning, friend? Will you believe a truth? Or will you believe the lie of the enemy? The lie over Swaziland is that this nation will fall apart and it will die. That AIDS, that HIV... That poverty will destroy this nation. That's the lie. The truth is, God has spoken life over that nation. That's why we're there. The lie over my body is that this undefined bug is just going to continue to wreak havoc in my body. But the truth is, by his stripes, I'm healed. The lie is that your business is going to continue to fall apart and, and that you're going to lose it. But the truth is, God has blessed you so that you might be a blessing to others. The lie is that your marriage is going to fall apart and that you're going to lose it. But the truth is, what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Are you living in the lie? Are you embracing the lie? Are you living in the truth? What is defining you? Father, I love you and I thank you this morning. Lord, there have been seasons in my life that I have sensed and felt an intensity of warfare and an intensity of battle. But Lord, I'm just not sure if there's been any quite like this. And like those, like those in the book of Hebrews who fought and battled and became weary and tired, God, there are some of us who are here today who are weary and tired. We're tired. We've been fighting. We've been fighting hard. And we're tired. But Lord, we refuse to believe the lie. God, it always goes back to that original lie. I can't trust God. Lord, there are some of us who are here today we come back to this same place we're here to say today 
I trust you, Lord. I trust you with my body. I trust you with my health. I trust you with my marriage. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my job. I trust you with my career. I trust you, God. I trust that you know what's best. Lord, I pray, may a spirit of truth, may a spirit of truth begin to rest in this place right now God there are many of us who walked in in anxiety and fear and brokenness and I pray Father may the spirit of truth begin to rush in right now may the spirit of truth begin to rush in right now Some of you here this morning say, you know what, Randy? As you were preaching this morning, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. I've been focused on the lie. I've been focused on the lie. The enemy has just been pounding me on this lie. And I'm tired. I'm weary. I've been fighting. I've been battling. And I realize that this isn't a battle against flesh this is a spiritual battle and I realize that this is the enemy trying to convince me of a lie Randy I want to surrender to the lie I want to surrender the lie to the Lord I want to embrace the truth of what God is saying over me what God is saying over my body, what God is saying over my marriage, what God is saying over my business, what God is saying over my career. Randy, I, I believe today is the day that I surrender the lie to the Lord and I embrace the truth. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet right now. I want you to come and join me down here at the front. Come right now.